Video section four, industrial pretreatment with BioCleaner. In this video, we'll show how to design an industrial wastewater pretreatment facility using BioCleaner technology. What are some of our advantages of using BioCleaner technology is that we provide less capital cost, less operational cost, less footprint, reduce sludge handling processing, we eliminate odor, and much more. What is pretreatment? Pretreatment is an industrial wastewater facility that treats their wastewater and discharge it to a certain limit where they can discharge to the sewer where the municipality can treat it and discharge to the environment. And this, this is a basic flowchart of an industrial pretreatment process using BioCleaner. In this example, we use high strength BOD, which can come from, any, from food processing, dairy, milk processing, and other industrial processes where you have a lot of organic, high strength organic waste. Now what is BOD? BOD is the amount of dissolved oxygen that our aerobic microorganisms can, can absor absorb and in order to treat the organic matter in a waste in a body of wastewater. There are several vari variables to consider industrial treatment for biocleaner. One is pH. Usually pH will vary depending on the industrial process. For our system, our micro or microorganisms operates, uh, the optimal pH is 6 to 8, however we can survive from 4 to 9. Below, if it's below 4 or above 9, usually you might consider having a neutralization tank where you could either increase the pH or decrease the pH in order for our system to survive. Usually they'll have some type of neutral, depending on the industrial process, in order to discharge the disorders, pH limits um, in addition. Our second variable we consider is temperature. For our system, our te optimal temperature is between 25 degrees Celsius to four, 32 degrees Celsius. However, we survive, we can survive between 10 degrees Celsius and 40 degrees Celsius. If it's above 40 degrees Celsius, our microbes become sluggish and eventually will die. In order to draw, um, if, it, if the wastewater temperature is above 40, you may have to consider adding heat exchangers to reduce the temperature to four, at least below four, at least 40 or below. If it's below 10, then you may have to increase the aeration in both tanks in order to keep our microorganisms um, surviving. The last variable we consider is flow rate. For flow rate, there's variations in flow rates and contaminants depending on the industrial process. Usually during peak hour, Usually in afternoon hours, you may have the highest amount of warm water going in. So since there's variations, you need to have an equalization tank in order to dampen the wastewater going in by mixing it and aerating it in order to discharge at a constant flow rate. Now to size an EQ tank depends on the industrial process, usually production. If it's, um, usually we consider the, the minimum maybe is 24 hours of retention. However, if it's Closed during the weekend, you may have to double it to 48 hours of retention time, or even more depends on operation. Usually, we would dose. Uh, we do a return from 2% to 5% of the influent after the aerobic treatment. We dose microbes here to jumpstart the bioreactor process, and here is where our microbes are going to break down most of the some of the BOD color and other contaminants. After equalization, our first process and secondary treatment is anaerobic. Here we do, we pretty much, it acts as an equalization in a way. So we dose microbes here, and this is where we have most of our BOD reduction from anywhere from 60 to 90%, depends on the contaminant strength. Our microbes here are going to eventually just break down the, either if it's nitrogen, phosphorus, it'll settle down. Usually for phosphorus, you may, you may have to recover every several years at minimum. After anaerobic treatment, we go to two zones of aerobic treatment. And these two zones, we're going to install our, bio, our portable bioreactors. Usually the second tank will have more units to create a polishing effect. 
to clean the water quality even further. To determine the number of units, will it'll be discussed in a later video. After aerobic treatment, it goes to settling, where smaller solids will settle to the bottom, and eventually it'll get chewed down. The rest of the organs that don't get chewed down will be usually we do a return to the anaerobic, which is every several years. After settling, usually you just discharge to the sewer. And in addition, um, if there's say there's a spike, even above product, even above pre-production, you may have to consider a equal um, emergency tank. This will provide a some type of safety zone where you can discharge your water if it's if it's so high that it will upset your system. To prevent that, you can just discharge it to an emergency tank, hold it, and then release it back into the system. Usually spikes like this would happen, it's very rare, but in case to prepare, you, you, may, you have the option and the footprint to consider adding an emergency tank. Um, this will end our video, and thank you for watching. For more information, please visit www.bio.